So I got a scam text message today, which isn't super uncommon. I have an entire spam box full of these, but when I get new spam text messages I haven't seen before, I like to check them out. I like to go through their entire process just to kind of see how the scam works and make sure that there isn't something new out there. I use this info to advise my friends and family about these new scams and also to report these sites to whoever I can report them to. And in nearly all cases, I don't actually take any action on these particular scam messages. However, today was a little different. The scammer did something that I wasn't expecting, and I saw an opportunity for a clear and obvious way where I could punish him for his scammer behavior. And naturally, I'm a programmer, so we're going to use programming to do that. The exact scam message I got looks like this. It says, Wascar, you still have $130 Amazon bonus credit. See what you can buy before it expires. Okay, this is obviously a scam. It's on Amazon.com. It's w1fbv.info. So just to see how the scam works, I take this URL, I copy it, and I paste it into an incognito window on Brave Browser. Which, after about five redirects, it lands me on this page. It's got a counter, offer expires, whatever. Dear customer, do your survey, you can claim a PS5. Cool, all right, start survey, click a bunch of garbage, whatever. Here again, it's all fake. And now it's saying, ooh, submitting answers, IP check, products available in stock, whatever. It's all a big scam, it's all fake. And then it says, congratulations, you get a free PS5. Okay, cool, I get a free PlayStation 5, but what's the actual scam? So I click claim reward. Oh, fill in your shipping address, pay a $1 delivery fee. So seeing this message is pretty clear what the scam is. For those who are not familiar, what they'll do is they'll ask you for your credit card. You'll put your credit card in. They'll say thank you for your order. Of course, you will not get a PlayStation 5, but instead you'll get a bunch of fraudulent charges on that card when the person uses that card for some digital goods that can't be refunded. Okay, so the question becomes, how can I punish this scammer for his behavior? So if I click continue, it takes me to a new page. So I land on this page, it says claim your one PlayStation 5, PlayStation Today, it's got shipping information, payment information, you put everything in and they steal it and that's kind of the end of the scam, or so I thought. So what I typically do in this situation is I fill in a bunch of junk data, which you can see here. I just put a bunch of numbers for the card number and CVV, but when I click order now, I saw a delay and then it said card is expired. So this made me think, are they using a real credit card processor to test the validity of the card instead of just storing it and trying it later? So I dug a little deeper. If it wants a non-expired card, I'll change January to August. I'll click order now, and now I get a message invalid credit card number. So the way payment processes check card validity is they use what's called the LUNS algorithm. And having worked enough in e-commerce, I know a bunch of test card numbers that aren't actually real cards, but they do satisfy the LUNS algorithm. And one of those numbers is 4007-00000027. So this is a valid card in that it's it passes that algorithm. So when I click order now, I actually get a completely new message. Transaction declined. The CC payment type hypercard and or the currency USD is not accepted and it has a ref ID. And so I notice if I close this and I just click order now again, of course it's going to decline again, but I notice that I get a completely different ref ID. And the reason this is so significant, and here's where the punishment comes in, is pretty much every payment gateway that I've ever used charges a very small fee for credit card declines. So that means that it's highly probable that every time I click that order now button, it's charging him about five cents. So it should be pretty clear at this point what my next move is, and that's to create a program that just creates thousands of declined transactions and hopefully a huge bill for the scammer. So first step, pop open Chrome console, make another request, and then actually analyze that request when it happens. So that request appears to be going to this URL, luckypro12.com slash ps5 slash include slash whatever. So we'll copy that over into our program as the URL. So next we have to imitate the actual request. So we'll look at the parameters that's being sent. So if we scroll down, we can see there's a whole bunch of form data. We're probably only interested in just the CC information. So CC number, expiration, and CVV. So we will copy that into a variable called data. And this will be our data that we're going to send to that endpoint. And then finally, we'll make the actual request. So response equals request dot post URL data equals data. And then just print out response just to make sure everything's working. So now we'll just come over to our terminal, run the program, and make sure everything's working. So Python 3, rec.py, and it says blank fields. Okay, so what this is telling me is that I can't just send the credit card information, I also have to send all the other information. So, not a big deal. We can just select all the remaining information as well. We'll select all the way to the very top, up to limelight character set. Come in here, paste that into data. Use our little cursor magic. Create new fields for all these. 
and that should be good. So this is now an identical request. So if we run it again, everything should work properly. Let's give it a shot again. And it worked great. So we got that same message, transaction declined. Every time I run it, there's still about a two second delay, but our script does work. So what we could do now is we could just put this in infinite loop, but the problem with putting this in an infinite loop is that it's still taking two seconds to run. So if I run the program in infinite loop, it, it does keep making these, these transaction decline requests, but it's not quite going fast enough. So I think we should scale this request rate up a little bit. So for that, we're gonna need threads. So we'll start by import threading, and then we'll come back down here. So we'll start by creating a new thread target called do request. And in do request, we will put this infinite loop. The goal here is to have, say, 50 threads sending requests all at once. So we'll create a new list called threads. We'll create a new loop for i in range 50. And then in here, we will create a new thread, threading.thread, target equals do request with no args, t.damn equals true. And then we will append t into threads. Then we need two additional loops, one to start each thread and one to join each thread. So we'll do i in range 50. We will do threads, subscript i, dot start. And then we will duplicate this again and do for join. And I have a small syntax error I forgot to put it in, so for i in range. So we should see now is we should see 50 threads all running at once in infinite loop and sending tons of transaction decline requests. So we'll start this program over and see what it does. So now, oh yes, now it's going very fast. So you can see all these, <laughs> all these ref IDs that are going up. So we're sending tons and tons and tons of transaction declines. So I'll let this run for a little bit now. The transaction IDs are like 20,000 higher than they were before, and there was a point where it did freeze for a little bit, but it does still seem to be running. So I've continued to let it run. It does seem to have slowed down a lot, but I think we've pretty much sent them enough, so I think we can stop it here. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video, and hope you learned a little bit about programming Python. And remember, the moral of the story is, don't be a scammer, because I'm not going to let you get away with it. Thanks all for watching. Have a great rest of your day.